This is Katherine Nightingale of Chattanooga State Community College. This video is for linear algebra on the topic of subspaces of Rn. The definition is as follows. A set H in Rn is a subspace of Rn if it meets all three of the following criteria. H must contain the zero vector. H must be closed under addition meaning that if two vectors u and v are both in h, then u plus v must be in h. And h must be closed under scalar multiplication, meaning that if you have a vector u in h and a scalar c, then cu must be in h also. Notice that since every subspace contains the zero vector, every subspace must include the origin. This is the easiest place to start when you're, ch when you're checking to see if something is a subspace. For practice, let's look at which of the following is a subspace of R2. The first one is this shaded area in the second quadrant. We're going to go through our steps involved in the definition of subspace to see if this, if this um, subset of R2 meets the criteria. First of all, we can see that the origin is contained in this set, so it contains the zero vector. So that one, that one's good. Now, Let's look at an arbitrary vector u in our subset and check the scalar multiplication. For scalar multiplication, the easiest thing to consider would be negative 1u. Now if I draw that, I end up outside of my set. And so negative 1u is not in the set, and so we say that it's not closed under scalar multiplication so it's not a subspace because it fails that second criteria of subspace. Let's look at another one. We have this line in R2. Okay, so let's check for the zero vector first. The zero vector is on the line and so that criteria is met. The zero vector is in H. I'm going to call my line H just for ease. Now, let's check addition. So let's look at two arbitrary vectors on the line, u and v. For any u and v on the line, u plus v is also going to be on the line, because they have nowhere else to go but on the line. They have the same slope. So we conclude that h is closed under addition. So the second criteria is met. Now the third criteria, scalar multiplication. So for any u on the line, cu will be on the line also. Here I'll draw an example. cu would just stretch or compress the vector and it would remain on the line with the same slope. So h is closed under scalar multiplication. We conclude that h is a subspace of R2. Now let's look at an example of something that is always a subspace, and that's the span. <clears throat> so my claim is that for any set of vectors v1 through vp in Rn, so each vector having n entries, the span of those vectors is always a subspace of Rn. So first of all, let's recall what it means to be the span of some vectors. If we have u and v as vectors in the span, that means that each one can be written as a linear combination of the v1 through vp. So u would equal c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus c3 v3 all the way on to CPVP. 
and the C's are scalars, they're real numbers. Now V is going to also be a linear combination, but it might have different scalars. So I'm going to call the scalars D, D sub 1, D sub 2, through D sub P. Okay, first check. The zero vector is in the span because those scalars can be any real number. So if I set them all equal to zero, then the zero vector is in the span. So first criteria is met. Okay, second one. Let's check to see if u plus v is in the span. So I add them together. The u has the scalars of c. The the v has the scalars of d. I add them together. Now I'm going to combine like terms. So when I combine my like terms, I combine the v1s, the v2s, the v3s, the vps. Okay, so I, I combine my like terms and notice that each vector is multiplied by a real number scalar. And so by definition, this is just a, a different linear combination of the v1 through vp. And so this is in the span. So u plus v is in the span. It's closed under vector addition. Now we have one more criteria. Let's let m be our scalar. So m is a real number. And I'm going to multiply u by m. So mu. Each component gets multiplied by m. I distribute the m. Now, notice that m times c is going to be a real number. mc1 is a real number. mc2 is a real number. mcp is a real number. And so I just get a different linear combination of the v1 through vp. So this is in the span of v1 through vp also. It's just a different linear combination. And so what happens is we've shown that for any span, the three criteria of a subspace is met. And so any span is a subspace of Rn if the vectors are in Rn. Now let's look at um, a few more examples. We want to know which of the following are subspaces of R3. I'm going to give you three examples. So this first one, we're told H is all the points x, y, z that meet this condition. 2x minus y plus 3z equals 4. So it has to meet that condition. So let's start with the zero vector. It's not in the H because it does not meet the condition. 2 times 0 minus 0 plus 3 times 0 is not equal to 4, and that was our condition. So I can automatically say this H is not a subspace of R3. Second example, so H is not a subspace. Second example, um, I'm, I have all the points x, y, z that meet the condition 2x minus y plus 3z equals 0. Now, on this one, I know that 0, 0, 0 is in h, since it will meet the condition. 2 times 0 minus 0 plus 3 times 0 equals 0. So I've met my first condition. Now I want to check the next two. So I'm going to let u and v be arbitrary points in h. I'm going to call u x1, y1, z1, and v x2, y2, z2. Now because they're in H, it means that, it means that each of them meets the condition. So 2x1 minus y1 plus 3z1 equals 0, and 2x2 minus y2 plus 3z2 equals 0. So we, we're going to use that as we check the conditions. Okay, let's check for addition first. Okay, u plus v. By definition, that would be x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2, and z1 plus z2. We want to know, is this in h, meaning does it meet the condition? 
So we'll plug it in 2 times x1 plus x2 minus the quantity y1 plus y2 plus 3 times the quantity z1 plus z2. I can rearrange this by distributing my 2, distributing my negative, and distributing my 3, and then rearrange. So all of my um, x sub 1, y sub 1, z sub 1 are first, and my x sub 2, y sub 2, z sub 2 are second. Now notice that this first part is u and the second part is v, and we know that those meet the condition, and so those are 0, so 0 plus 0 gives me 0. So u plus v is in h. It's closed under addition. Now I'm going to check scalar multiplication. So I multiply u by a scalar. I get cx1, cy1, cz1. I want to know does that meet the condition of h. So I plug it into my equation 2c1 minus cy1 plus 3cz1. I'm going to factor out the c and then I just get the condition that u meets. So that's 0 and so yes the scalar multiplication is in H. So it met all three conditions, so H is a subspace of R3. One more example. We have the point 5x, 3x, and negative 1x, where x is an arbitrary number. We'll assume that um, x is a real number because that's what we've been working with in linear algebra. So since x is arbitrary, x can be 0. So the 0 vector is in h. Now let's take two arbitrary points in h. I'm going to let u equal 5x1, 3x1, negative 1x1. I have to have the 5, 3, negative 1 because the, that's what all the points in h look like v is going to be 5, 5x2, 3x2, negative 1x2. Now I want to check addition and scalar multiplication. So is u plus v in h? u plus v, by definition, I'm going to add the first components together, second components together, third components together. I can factor out the 5 from the first component, factor out the 3 from the second, and the negative 1 from the third. Now, the x1 plus x2 is a real number, assuming that x1 and x2 were real numbers. And I have the same thing in, in both um, remaining spots in the second and third components. Now, this meets the condition. This is 5 times a real number. 3 times that same real number, and negative 1 times that same real number. And so this point is in H. It meets the condition for being in H. And so we say it's closed under addition. Now scalar multiplication is Cu and H. Cu, I'm going to multiply each component by C. Now if I pull the 5 out, the 3 out, and the negative 1 out, from their respective components, I get 5 times cx1, 3 times cx1, and negative 1 times cx1. So this cx1 is a real number. I have the same one in the second and third components, so this meets the criteria for being an h. So we would conclude that H is a subspace of R3. Now this was our last example, but if you've noticed, we do the same three steps for each thing. We try to check is the zero vector in the set, and then given two arbitrary vectors, is there sum in the set? And then taking a scalar, is that scalar times a vector in the set? 
And if one of those fails, it's not a subspace. If all three hold, it is a subspace. 